Welcome, in today's video I'm going to be showing you the best team that you can free hit to in Game Week 18. I know it's going to be a very popular strategy to free hit in Game Week 18 and then bench boost in Game Week 19. But before obviously I dissect all of these players and explain why I've got them there and discuss the alternatives, I want to address some of the key questions that you lot have been asking me in you know some of the last live streams that I've been doing and also videos. So the main thing that catches everyone out every single year about the free hit chip is in terms of transfers. So let's say, for example, you make a transfer before activating the free hit. Just to make it clear, whatever transfers you make, it doesn't matter because they will be cleared and the free hit wipes everything out. And going into game week 19, after you free hit in game week 18, your team is going to revert to what you had in the previous game week, in game week 17, because the free hit, similar to a wild card, you can change your entire team, but unlike the wild card, which is permanent, the free hit is temporary and only lasts for one week. That's why I always say to all of you who also asked me, when should I free hit? Like if I have, let's say, seven or more players, should I free hit? It also depends on the quality of the players. But uh, in my opinion, if you have seven or more players and you're, you know, pretty happy with most of them, I would try to save it for another week where maybe you're not even going to have up to five players and the free hit will gain you more points. And in my opinion, the free hit is probably the most important chip besides the wild card, because with a bench boost with a triple captain, you could get 20, 30, maybe 40 points more if you're lucky. But with a free hit, you can gain maybe 50 or more points because you literally build a team that you wouldn't be able to have otherwise. It helps you navigate those blank game weeks, maybe even the double game weeks. Uh, maybe you don't have enough double game week players for your liking to bench boost or whatever. So you free hit and you assemble the team that way. But game week 18, in my opinion, one of the best weeks to free hit in. And I completely understand that. And of course, some of you still in the comments section will be asking me, should I free hit with, you know, these players? I have Kane, I have Watkins, etc. Just leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to respond to as many of you as possible as I always do. And another thing, of course, that determines the free hit, some of you will have activated already, is to navigate price rises now. Obviously, if you do activate the free hit and you're trying to bring some of these players in, the price rises still apply to you. And let's say, for example, you have a lot of money tied into someone like Grealish or Dominic Calvert-Lewin and you get rid of them, but then you decide, oh, I want to get them back in. You lose the money uh, tied into them and you will have to pay extra because let's say you got Calvert-Lewin in at 7 million. They're currently around 7.4 million, um, you know, if you sell them. But if you sell them, then get them back you will have to pay extra around 7.7 .7 million to get him back. And uh, when you go into game week 19, if you still have Calvert-Lewin, of course, you're not going to have that extra money. Uh, you're still going to have, obviously, the money you had from before. So it's very complicated, but uh, hopefully that has answered all of your main questions regarding game week 18 and also free hitting. If you have any more, like I said, leave them in the comment section below. But as for game week 18 and the best players to have, the best teams to target, quite evident from what you can see on screen, but I'm going to be explaining it now. If you look at the fixtures, and I have made a team beforehand for Game Week 18, but it has changed because teams like Arsenal now in the last week or so have popped up with form and they have got some serious options for you to consider in Game Week 18. But if you look at across the fixtures, games like Wolves Everton are quite hard to dissect and quite difficult to predict, but Players like Calvert-Lewin, still good options, Neto, etc. And I'll be discussing some of the alternatives when I show you, you know, an alternative 11. Um, but across the board, some games, you know, very difficult. Like Aston Villa Spurs, <laughs> which assets do you go for? Do you back Oli Watkins and Grealish to deliver the goods? In my opinion, it's probably best to steer away from double attack from either team, maybe. Um, but Son and Kane, it's really hard to go against them, in my opinion. Then you have Arsenal. You know, a week or so ago, I would have said maybe even one of them is too much. But now two or maybe even three is uh, actually looking really appealing. And if you look across the board, in my opinion, Man United, Man City and Arsenal are the main teams to target, especially Manchester City. Uh, but Man United also, you know, a title challenger at the moment. The likes of Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, Martial, all great options. And even in defence, facing a Burnley side who are very poor offensively and uh yeah, but uh, when you look at Sheffield versus Newcastle, you know, two very poor teams, especially Sheffield. Uh, but Wilson, you know, he looks like one of the best budget options this week. And uh, you look across those fixtures, and like I said, the teams to target, in my opinion, Manchester City, Man United and Arsenal. And as you can see here, I've got three Manchester City players, but of course I will show you an alternative where you could maybe have De Bruyne and Sterling and have only one City defender. But I do think double-seated defence is still a viable option despite 
Brighton being decent offensively in the last few game weeks, they tend to miss a lot of chances, even if you know they scored three against Wolves. And to be honest, Manchester City's defence is by far the best in the Premier League. I've been talking about them since game week 13, believe it or not. And yeah, in my opinion, the likes of Stones, Cancelo, Diaz, definitely, you know, must-haves. I know some of you will be thinking about Edison or Stefan. It obviously depends. I think by the time the game week does come around, Edison should be back. But that's something that's going to cause a lot of headaches. So in my opinion, who are the best goalkeepers for the game week? And I narrowed it down to three. Leno, De Gea and Darlow. And I think they're the most likely to get a clean sheet. And obviously the Manchester City keeper is also, but I wouldn't waste the Manchester City spot on them, in my opinion. I would rather spend it on the midfield or the defence, uh, either doubling up on the defence or in the midfield and then having one in the other. Uh, so in my opinion, having Leno, who is actually 4.9 million, that's a very good price for him. And he's got the most clean sheets away from home. But unfortunately, the game is at home against Palace. And the only thing that kind of goes against him, in my opinion, is the fact that Arsenal you know, have struggled to Crystal Palace in recent years. But then again, they didn't beat Brighton since they came back up into the Premier League and they beat them uh, just a few days ago in Boxing Day with a solid 1-0 performance away from home. So, you know, Arsenal, they've had a very poor start to the season, uh, but they're right back up into the mix. You know, they're only three points off, you know, the top six and six points off the top four. So they can definitely, you know, with the fixtures coming up, they can definitely mount uh, you know, some sort of challenge, but I still think a lot of inconsistency, a lot of bad players in there, but, you know, the shining lights like Kieran Tierney, Leno, Saka, Smith Rowe, etc., they're all very good players, and in my opinion, although I don't really tend to back Arsenal for clean sheets, this could be a great game week for that. Crystal Palace are very poor offensively, and they tend to rely on the magic of Eze and Zaha, so, yeah, I think Leno is probably the best option, but let's say you're not really feeling Leno. What I would probably do in your case is probably get Darlow, and what you can do is get one Manchester City defender, one Man United defender and one Arsenal defender. And in my opinion, if you had to pick one, Kieran Tierney would be uh, the best one because in terms of chances created, only the likes of Cancelo and Chilwell and Robertson are really above him. And yeah, in my opinion, all of them are the best fullbacks in the league alongside others. Um, but yeah, they've been doing very well. And as you can see here, with the current structure I have, holding would be a very good you know, first substitute. And to be honest, let's say you're not really feeling Saka. Um, you could actually play a 4-4-2 using this team. So you could play Stones, Wan-Bissaka, Cancelo and Holding. And then in your midfield, you have De Bruyne, Rashford, Bruno and Son with the two up front in Wilson and Kane. So you have a bit of flexibility with the team that you see here. But of course, there are so many alternatives, so many players who have been so good this season, but it's impossible to fit all of them in. So two notable absentees are Jack Grealish, who in my opinion for his price is the best uh, for sure. There's no doubt about it. And there's also Calvert-Lewin, who despite being so poor recently and Everton have kind of reverted to a more defensive team, you know, with Hammers coming back and Everton did look better when he came on, I think that Calvert-Lewin can get some goals, but it's just so difficult to predict. And Wolves have been very poor defensively. They haven't really kept a clean sheet in a long time. Um, it's a difficult one, but I don't know, with Calvert-Lewin... Just too many ifs and buts, uh, but he is still an option, and that's the thing I have to stress. But uh, if you're looking at strikers, like I said, Wilson, in my opinion, is definitely a must-have um, You know, on a free hit. And against Sheffield, you would expect him to break his little goal drought. The only problem with Callum Wilson, I have to say, is the fact that Newcastle are so poor offensively. And I've looked at Newcastle statistics, you know, in terms of touches in the box, in terms of expected goals, they're pretty much, what, 20th or right down the bottom. And all of these attacking stats, they are so, so poor. But Callum Wilson still gets points. And I think he is due a haul. Um, if we look at his last few fixtures, he's blanked in all of them pretty much. And, you know, the last haul came against Fulham, where it was a dubious penalty as well, uh, if we're talking about dubious penalties in the last few weeks. But still, I think Callum Wilson, I back him to do well. He is a bit of a, a troll, you know, in recent years in FPL, but I do think that for this game week, he is one of the best options and, you know, hopefully luck is on your side if you do go with him. And Kane is a difficult one because obviously if you wanted to have a double City attack and you wanted Bruno Fernandes and maybe a Rashford or Son, it's really difficult to fit Kane in. And 
like I said, maybe the best option is to only go with one Spurs attacker. Uh, but then you look at Son and Kane, both have decent records against Aston Villa. Who do you go for? And they tend to combine for each other's goals. I mean, if you see the goal that Son scored against Leeds the other day, the pass that Kane found was magnificent. And they just have a telepathic understanding. And that's why they're going to break the record for the you know most combinations in a single season. And probably, you know, of all time, you know, in terms of they're up there with the likes of Henri and Perez, Drogba and Lampard are pretty much the only ones in front of them uh, in terms of more goals combined for. So it's a really difficult one, but uh, Kane and Son still great options, even Grealish, although you don't see him in this team. But I think we have to highlight Saka, and I know the price might put you off because people always have this conception of, oh, if I want a player in, especially my starting lineup, they have to be kind of expensive or whatever. But Saka is producing like a seven or eight million pound player and you know returns in all of his last three games and that has coincided with a you know upturn in Arsenal's fortunes and goals assists you know his dribbles he just adds that spark and he's just a good all-round player and I think yeah in terms of you know for his price apart from Suchek there is no one better at all and people actually asked me in the last stream you know should I go for Saka or Suchek I still went with Suchek um, you know especially if you're looking to bench boost in game week 19 but if you you know didn't want a free hit in game week 18 and you wanted a fifth midfielder, I think Saka is a great choice for that. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, he's one of the best, you know, kind of differential picks. Uh, although I do expect a lot of people to have him if they do free hit. But we'll have to wait and see. And uh, in terms of other players that I haven't really discussed, I mean, there is the double United attack. And Rashford, I always say this, I think Son is the best around his price, but Rashford is probably the second best. And... In recent weeks, you know, you can't really deny it. Although maybe Rashford has got some lucky goals here or there and has missed a lot of chances, he is still producing the goods uh, on a consistent basis. And Burnley away, I think, is a good fixture for Manchester United. And a double United attack or even triple United overall, I think, is probably the best bet. I would expect them to, to win that game. And in my opinion, you know, Bruno Fernandes is a must-have anyway. Um, so if you don't have him and you're not free-hitting, just get him in. And uh, yeah, him and De Bruyne for game week 18, the standout captaincy options. And De Bruyne looked back to his best. He was playing in an advanced striker role, really, as a false nine. And he did the business. But I have to say, he missed a great chance again. And in the last few games against, you know, uh, Newcastle, Southampton, he has missed a lot of good chances but with De Bruyne, you always know there's going to be a chance um, that he's going to create for someone else. And also, he can still score. And he has good positioning. His just finishing has been letting him down a bit. But the thing about De Bruyne that kind of you know makes me doubt uh, the whole situation is he has three home games in a row. So regardless of your, if you're free hitting or whatever, you want to have him for game week 19 and beyond all the way to game week 22. Now, Manchester City players this season, at least offensively, have proven unreliable and, you know, there's better value elsewhere. I mean, you look at Son, for example, or Grealish. But I think for the next, you know, pretty much month or so, I think De Bruyne is a great, great option. And he could be a captain's choice, maybe even triple captain in game week 19. And in my opinion, he's a must-have for this game week. And I look at it and I think I'm not free-hitting at the moment, but uh, he is a big, big, you know, black hole in my team. And he is someone I've actually considered getting rid of Salah for, for game week 18 and maybe doing a kind of yo-yo between them two, but I'm not entirely sure. But in my opinion, if you're free hitting, you have to have De Bruyne and Fernandes. Then others like Son and Kane, having one of them I would recommend. And I think Wilson is a must-have for this game considering his price and considering the opposition. And apart from that, it's kind of all, you know, it depends. There's a lot of variables, a lot of different options you can go for. And speaking of different options, these are kind of some of the alternatives. So like I said, I highlighted Darlow and De Gea in goal. So I wouldn't double up personally on, let's say, Arsenal defence. And I know, obviously, in this first team I showed you, I have Holding and Leno. But Holding is great for his price, and he's mainly a first, you know, substitute. And, you know, you can't really go wrong with that. And they can still get a clean sheet, you know, if need be. But other than that, I probably wouldn't, you know, double up on a defence other than City. But let's say you wanted to double up on City's attack. Obviously, you can't go with double City defence in that case. And I think if you just want to go with someone secure who's most likely going to start, Ruben Diaz is your guy. But look at the FA Cup games beforehand and then you can kind of garner what's going to happen in terms of team selection. 
um, because if Diaz is playing 90 minutes in the FA Cup as well, there could be a slight chance that he gets rotated um, against Brighton, so you never know. But in my opinion, the best combination is probably having one Man United defender, one Arsenal defender, and one Manchester City defender at least. And whether you have an Arsenal goalkeeper in Leno who covers the defence, and you have double City and a United, it doesn't matter. But having all of those covered, in my opinion, is the best way uh, for this game. Sice is another one. I know Wolves have been very poor defensively, but in terms of goal threat, he is right up there for defenders and he scored against Brighton uh, and actually had him in my fantasy five, you know, I selected him and he did the business for me. But uh, yeah, Roman Sice, such a threat from set pieces and still an option. The only problem is that Everton is still a bit of a tough fixture and Wolves have been so poor defensively. Um, there are obviously arguments for and against, but he's still someone to consider. But uh, if you're asking me personally, a Man United defender like Maguire or Juan Bissaka would probably be much better. And then Man City defenders, I mean, they're in another stratosphere at the moment. And Tierney, I have to highlight him. Like I said, most chances created pretty much since the beginning of December of any defender. And he scored a great goal against West Brom. I mean, look at that, 18 points. And you know what? 10 people triple captain this guy. Imagine that, 54 points from a triple captaincy on Kieran Tierney. I mean, that is incredible. I mean, I wonder how many of them are, you know, first accounts. But still, credit where credit's due. And uh, yeah, Tierney has been, you know, so good this season, but it's kind of been overridden by the fact that Arsenal have been so poor. But Tierney, trust me, he's a quality player and uh, very happy that he is in that Arsenal side. And he is someone to consider. So let's say you don't go for Leno, as you can see in the other team, and maybe you go for Darlow. Definitely, I would say go for Tierney if you had to pick one Arsenal defender and you had enough funds to do that. So these are kind of some of the other options. Mitchell, in my opinion, at 3.9 million as your fifth defender. You're not really going to be counting on him to come on, but if he does, probably won't get a clean sheet or whatever, but um, he's an enabler, and uh, it's better having one or two points than zero, uh, the way I look at it. Um, but I wouldn't really think too much about him, but I do think he will play. He has been good for Palace recently, and uh, to be fair, they did keep a clean sheet against Sheffield United, but uh, it's not much to kind of judge from that result. And as for Grealish, like I said, it's really hard to overlook him, but uh, when you're looking at the Spurs-Manchester City, or should I say, sorry, the Spurs-Aston Villa game, I don't know, it's just really difficult to have too many players from, you know, both teams. So if you have Martinez and then you have the double Spurs attack and then you have Watkins and Grealish, I mean, that is, you know, a very difficult one. But I wouldn't free hit if, you know, you have those players already and you have a lot of players for the game week. But uh, if you are free hitting, I would try to avoid double Villa attack for sure. Um, and yeah, I think Grealish is definitely the best player to have. Now, another player or two that you could consider from Aston Villa is Traore. And El Ghazi. Now, the problem with them two, especially now, would be that Barkley actually is going to return uh, for this game week. And that's what Dean Smith said in his recent press conference. And he said he might not make the FA Cup game, but he should be back by the next Premier League game. And if he does slot back in, he'll play an attacking midfield. That means Grealish gets shifted to the left. And that means El Ghazi will either go to the right or he'll be dropped and Traore keeps that right winger spot. So it's a difficult situation. I mean, it's hard to predict. That's why El Ghazi and Traore would be very risky. And that's why I'd prefer the likes of Saka or even Smith Rowe, who I do expect to start yet again. But uh, he's probably someone you'd want to have on your bench, if we're being honest. Probably not someone you want to start because he can have a great game and still not really get you the points. Uh, for example, the Brighton game, he, was, uh, he put in a very, you know, very good performance in terms of putting in a shift, uh, but didn't really get those goals or assists. Um, but then he got, you know, two assists against West Brom. He got the assist against Chelsea. But really, the qualities that Smith Rowe brings to the Arsenal team is mainly due to positioning and the tenacity in midfield. Um, obviously, apart from that, he does have creativity. He has goal threat, uh, but sometimes he can have a great game without really giving you the FPL returns that you want. So I would have him as a bench option. More than anything, if there's any Arsenal player you want to have in the midfield, in my opinion, it's Bukayo Saka, without a shadow of a doubt, if you want him in your starting lineup. And of course, Fernandez and De Bruyne, they are pretty much non-negotiables in your midfield. You want to have them. But Sterling is a very interesting differential. And there's also the likes of Gundogan or Foden. Um, but uh, I do think Sterling has that more explosive potential on a consistent basis, although he hasn't really shown it this season. Um, in the past few weeks, Sterling has been outperforming De Bruyne, obviously, up until the Chelsea game. So Sterling is still someone I would consider. And if you really want that City double attack, especially with Basuma suspended, and he is crucial to Brighton, then I think double City attack could really work well for you for once this season. Um, but if you're asking me personally, what would I do? I would rather have double city defense than double city attack. But uh, 
yeah, if it's between De Bruyne and Sterling, although Sterling has been better for the last six game weeks overall, I do prefer De Bruyne and the Chelsea game does showcase that. And if he plays in that false nine role with Aguero's back and he's starting, I think that would just only benefit De Bruyne. And we'll have to wait and see. And another thing, Brighton just struggles so much defending from crosses and set pieces. So De Bruyne for that could be very, very good indeed. And uh, if you ask me for in terms of captaincy, who would you captain? I probably still would go for Fernandes and De Bruyne would be my vice, but you could go with either one of them. I probably wouldn't captain anyone else, although Son and Kane are still very good options. And the attack, there's two new options that obviously I haven't discussed beforehand, um, but obviously Wilson we already know about. Calvert-Lewin, I did discuss a bit before, he can still do well. I do think the goals will come, uh, but in terms of you know the last few game weeks, he has been very, very poor, and Everton as well. Um, but hopefully more creativity with Hammers coming back, and I think Dinia should be back very soon, although I'm not sure if he's going to be back for game week 18. I don't think he will be, but uh, Calvert-Lewin will benefit from that and he can still do very well for you. So don't completely write him off, but there may be better options this week. But Lacazette is actually a very good differential, and I know a lot of people have been speaking about Aubameyang, and in the past he has been doing it. He's been very consistent for Arsenal, but this year he hasn't. And Lacazette is Arsenal's top scorer this season in all competitions and in the Premier League with seven goals, and in the last three games he's been very good. And if you look at all competitions, he's actually scored in four games in a row. He scored against Manchester City, and then he scored obviously against Chelsea, Brighton, and West Bromwich Albion. So he's been very good, and his overall performances, his link-up play with Smith Rowe, with Saka, etc., Martinelli, have been very, very good. And he is also just such a, a workhorse. So even if he has a bad game, you know, he always gives 100%. That's what, you know, people love about Lacazette. And now he's adding the finishing touch, which he didn't have beforehand on a consistent basis anyway. But he's someone to consider, I think. I do believe he will start, I mean, unless Arteta wants to lose and change a winning formula. I think Lacazette starting, you know, would be very good for the team and it will benefit the attack, add more balance. And I do think if he does start, he could be in for some great hauls and he is a differential. So he is someone to consider for those of you. I know some of you have, you know, picked him out and I have kind of been very skeptical of, uh, or should I say skeptical, of Arsenal assets in the past, even within the last few days. But Lacazette, Saka, Smith Rowe, Tierney, Holding, Leno, they're all players to consider. And uh, yeah, but just be careful, you know, don't go overboard. Maybe triple Arsenal in your starting lineup is a bit too much. But maybe having two of them and one on your bench is probably the right way to go. And like I said, my probably my probable preference, should I say, is having either Tierney or Leno to cover your defence. Holding can be your backup, or if not Smith Rowe, and uh, Saka in your starting lineup. That's what I would probably go with. But there's a lot of options this week. If there is anyone that I have left out, then let me know down in the comment section below because there's so many options this week. Neto, I haven't really discussed him but he can be very good as well. But like I said, that Everton Wolves game is very unpredictable, very hard to call, um, but you never know what can happen. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe if you're new. We have reached 2,000 subscribers in basically the first day of the new year. Great way to start the year. I have to say thank you everyone who did subscribe. And it was during the live stream actually that it happened. So I have to say very humbled by the support. And share this video around with your friends and family. But like I said, Free hit, very important chip, probably the most important alongside the wild card. Maybe even more, actually, uh, now that I come to think of it. Um, but so, yeah, definitely, like I kept on saying, if you have maybe six or fewer players, especially, you know, of kind of average picks uh, for game week 18, then I would consider using the free hit. Otherwise, if you have seven or more, especially some very good players like Bruno, De Bruyne, Cancelo, Kane, Son, etc., then I would probably, you know, just save the free hit. Uh, for another game week where you're going to need it more and you're going to get more points from that, you know, activating that chip um, than you would just by getting maybe two or three extra players that you don't have. Uh, but that's my synopsis of that. And hopefully this does help you. So even if you don't, you know, copy or use the exact same structure that I have, hopefully it gives you some ideas because there's a lot of players like Grealish that people are overlooking, but there's still quality players that can, you know, return for you. And uh, if I do free hit, it will be something very similar to this, probably identical. Um, you know, sometimes you may kind of think and uh, last minute you have a Eureka moment, you think double city attack and then Sterling does really well or something like that. Um, but this is probably what I would go with and we'll have to wait and see. But thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.